Hi everyone, it's Cass. Welcome back to my channel, What Cass Read. We also have Luna in the background. Puppy. She's, um, she's in a mood right now, so you can see her playing back there. But anyways, um, we are here today to do a spoiler video. A spoiler video. Not a spoiler free. A spoiler video to talk about The Way of Kings, written by Brandon Sanderson. I'm gonna hold this book up now. You know what this book looks like. And then I have to set it down because I don't think that I could literally hold that book for the rest of this video. All right, so I just wanted to say from here on out, you're going to see um, spoiler filled videos for the entire Stormlight Archives because why mess with a good thing? There are a thousand and one Way of King spoiler free videos out there and there are some top tier, top tier spoiler, spoiler free reviews that why should I mess with a good thing when I just would as easily direct you to some of the many, many, many great reviews out there. My favorite one, I'm actually going to put the link for that down below. Captured in words, any of his high fantasy reviews, I will always recommend them. Just the amount of time that he puts into them, the way that he writes the reviews, he sources out fan art, it's just incredible. So if you want a really great spoiler-free review for The Way of Kings, go ahead and check out his review. Um, and for me, we're just going to talk about the things that I really enjoyed about this book and maybe some things that shocked me a little bit. Um, so let's get to it. First of all, if you couldn't already tell or had not already predicted, I gave this five out of five stars. I really have no rhyme or reason to how we're going to talk about this book. I have a bunch of notes of just like some of the things that I thought about while reading. The first thing I think that I wanted to talk about were the two different settings that we get, which is um, primarily the library and then the Shattered Plains. I actually really enjoyed both. Um, I didn't have like one preferred setting over the other. I don't know, I think this just like goes to show like how much life Sanderson breathed into the Shattered Plains. Like, the Shattered Plains were almost like a character unto themselves. The craggy bleakness of the Shattered Plains, I guess the juxtaposition of like the death that the Shattered Plains wreaks on certain characters, particularly Bridge Four, but like any of the Bridgemen, any of the Parshendi. Then you get the war camps. But then, like, even trickling through the war camps, you also get the court and the court setting. Um, it's, like, all there on the Shattered Plains. Like, there's just so much happening, so much life happening on this, like, super desolate part of um, Roshar. And then the library... I wish we'd gotten a little bit more time in the library, but correct me if I'm wrong, I, I have heard that Words of Radiance will have a lot more of Shallan and her timeline. It will have a lot more of Yasna and her timeline. So maybe we'll get more library or maybe we're done with it. Maybe we're just moving on, moving past it um, because now they're, they're actually on their own, on their own mission. This video is going to be like a hot damn mess because I've got, it, it's probably like the worst time of day to trying to film right now because I've got so many trucks outside. I've got the freaking birds right outside. If you've watched any of my spoiler filled videos, they're pretty much a mess. So it's pretty on brand for me at this point to have all of this crap going on in the background. But my goodness, I don't know what order I want to go in. I don't want I don't know. Um, maybe we'll just start right off with Kaladin and Bridge 4, because Kaladin and Bridge 4's timeline was definitely my favorite part of the book. Um, it, they were the sections that I was eagerly looking forward to getting back to. Um, there were so many aspects to Bridge 4 and Kaladin's timeline that I, I loved so many different things. I loved the found family aspect of it. It's no secret that I really enjoy found family storylines, um, but the, but the things that, like, really got me right in the heart, right in the feels, just turned me into this massive sap, was when Kaladin starts... There goes a frickin' truck! As soon as I get started. When Kaladin is starting to, like, turn his thought process around of how he's gonna try and get Bridge Four to join together. And, of course, that was with the Camp Stew. There's so many things that he did up until that point where he's literally trying to find any way that he can make some extra money so that way he can purchase some um, medical supplies and bring the men back alive from the bridge runs. There's so many things that he did up until that point. But the thing that super got me in the feels was this this homey environment that, that, that Bridge Four had created around the camp stew. And, like, it first was just, like, 
these men are hungry and they're just gonna eat. Um, a couple of them are volunteering more information about themselves, but then as soon as we get to the very end, like when all is said and done, when they have finally ended up joining Dalinar's war camp, they still kept the family stew going. You know, in my mind I have this like whole fantasy room, review room that obviously I can't do in a small apartment, but if I had my own review room, I would really want a photo, a poster of some fan art of Bridge Four, because they were just like my lifeblood um, throughout this whole book. Okay, so some of the other things that really stuck out to me with Kaladin was, and that storyline, was when he began wearing the Parshendi carcasses as armor. Who? That was really hard to see because then he's starting to piece together that these Parshendi are not just these like no thought monstrous villains. Like the pain that he caused the Parshmen of their group, the pain that he saw inflicted upon the Parshendi once they saw that he was wearing the carcass of a fellow Parshendi and they directed their entire attack onto Kaladin. It was, it was like it was one of my favorite moments of beginning to think about like what's going on on the other side. Of course, the very, very end revelation about the Parshendi and the Parshman, um, you know, that's gonna feed into it. And I really am looking forward to finding out more about that in the words of Radiance and beyond. But seeing like us take the time through Kaladin's eyes to experience the pain of him wearing the Parshendi carcasses was really powerful and impactful. I thoroughly enjoyed that part. And, and of course, him, him and Dalinar figuring out that it's these, like, it seemed like these mated pairs are attacking together. So again, it just is, like, more world building that I would like to see from this perspective. I just think we're, I just think there's just so much to the Parshendi that I am really looking forward to figuring out if it is true on their assumptions that it is these mated pairs that are attacking together. Um, and then seeing the flashbacks within the Parshendi camps leading up to our faux treaty. I think, but I, I really think it was like Kaladin wearing their carcass that made me consider what is potentially going on there. Um, Cause I'm not gonna lie, I was still like really unclear about the Parshendi at the very beginning when Seth um, pulls off his first assassination that we read about um, and they're talking about the Parshendi Treaty. So at that point in the story, I'm not really focused too much on who the Parshendi could potentially be because I'm just trying to get established into the story and figure out why this assassination is so impactful moving forward. I also found that like Kaladin, he's really like, he wallows in his self-pity a bit. We'll just say a bit, a lot. But the fact that he refuses, he has now twice killed um, shard bearers and he has twice refused to pick up a shard blade or a shard plate. He's got to be the only person in this whole story that's ever refused that kind of power. Um, obviously him being framed and not being allowed to accept the shard plate puts him on a certain trajectory, puts him on the trajectory for the rest of his life and to be slave branded. And I'm just wondering if he's ever going to become that guy. Like, he's so much the moral compass. I wonder if he'll ever allow himself that kind of honor, that kind of notoriety. I mean, he's already pretty notorious throughout this war camp, but I wonder if he'll ever accept it upon himself and actually accept some type of shard plate, some type of shard blade. I would really like for him to do that. Cause he, he has officially turned into one of those characters where I'm like, kind of reminds me of Fitz, where like Fitz won't accept the things that are due to him that he has every right to because he just like feels so guilty, wants to punish himself. He's a like, he just wants, he's a glutton for punishment. That's how I'm viewing Kaladin at this point. And I apparently have just an affinity toward these characters. Um, but I just wonder if he'll ever do that. Okay, Dalinar, another person who is just so damn honorable and this self-punishment all in his brother's honor. And it makes me think, what was he like before his brother died? We get um, brief glimpses to the Blackthorn, but like, will we get more um, insight um, into his past relationships? What was he like with his sons before his brother died? Before he had to like 
pick up this mantle and try and figure out um, meaning from the way of kings. Is he trying to make up for something with his sons? We see not a lot of that. We just see Dalinar as he is right now. Um, he broke my heart a lot. This this has to be like another like soft spot of mine. I feel like all of these characters like hold different soft spots for me. But this soft spot of the like aging warrior, the aging high lord prince that potentially has some wrongs to right and is not necessarily at the same strength that they were when they were in their prime. I feel like that's Dalinar too. Um, it broke my heart when nobody was believing him about his visions or that people like saw the visions as something that they had to cover up. I guess this issue of like, is mental illness something in this society that everybody wants to cover up? I feel like Seth is a really good example of that. I feel like Dalinar is a really good example of that. Um, and the High Storm visions, people are like, we, we can't let knowledge of this continue to get out. We don't want people to see you fall prey to the High Storm visions. And, and then the, the types of things that were revealed in the High Storm visions, these are like a pre-recording of things that have happened in the past, each and every one of them broke my heart. Each and every one of these visions broke my heart. Um, but watching the Knights Radiant give up their blades was probably the worst. And I don't even know why, because I we are still in this mystery of we don't even know why the Knights Radiant abandoned everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and that could potentially be why that just like broke my heart too. Is like you actually see the moment where they put their blades down and that's it. And now we're in the world that we're in. Now we're in the predicament that we're in. Whew, that broke my heart. But what is what is Dal Dalinar's significance to the Parshendi? Because then the, at the very end, the Parshendi are like, you're the one we were looking for. <laughs> what could this mean? What is his significance to the Parshendi? Again, there's this whole Parshendi story that I really need. And of course, he's like super, super noble and giving up his shard blade, but for like the right reasons. These are all just such good characters. What are some other things? Okay, let's get to Yasna and Shallan. The fact that they were both so casting the whole time, especially Yasna, I think she's also probably gonna skyrocket to being one of my favorite female characters of life. Because once we find out that she was soul casting the whole time, I was like, you saucy little minx. You are so sly. I really enjoyed personally, that this is a society where women read and write over the men. It's weird that it's like, oh, that's a woman's thing to do, but like, how do the men not realize they're at such a disadvantage of not being able to read and write? Like, they have to employ a woman that they can trust with everything and trust that they're sending the right message. But like, how many things could potentially ever in this world have been misinterpreted because the woman didn't write what the man wanted her to write? And he has no idea. I want to see Yasna in comparison to the men of this world. Um, because she's ridiculously powerful. Yes, people call her a heretic, but she's still the king's sister. She's still the dead king's daughter. And like, I always like those kinds of female characters that are like, look, listen, it is what it is. I'm never going to be the person in power, but I am ridiculously powerful. And how do the people treat her when she's not like in a library setting, when she's not off on her own? Like, I really want to bring her over to the Shattered Plains and see her interactions with the court. And I really need that, that type of setting in my life. Again, I, I think we get more Yasna and Shalon in the next book. So maybe, the, maybe I'll see that then. Shadesmar, I need to learn more about this. Full stop. That's it. And Shallan killed her father. That was a nice fun revelation. Um, because like, we're in her head this whole time. She never, like, maybe that now finally explains the guilt that she possibly feels about she needs to get this soul caster. Um, she needs to get this device to bring back to her family because it's her fault that her family is in this predicament. But what did her father do to her that she killed him for? Hmm? Hmm? I mean, her brother was an asshole. Her brother was, like, tormenting these, like, crab creatures. Maybe her father was an asshole, too. All right, so, and then, um, I think the last thing that I want to touch on was Seth and how he finally, at the very end, we see where these death recordings are coming from and see who's really pulling the strings for him. And I wonder if he'll ever, like, be able to break free. 
But what would happen if he did break free because of all the immense power that he holds? See, there's way too many questions that I have about this whole book. Obviously, it's a thousand pages. This is thick with two C's. I really want to read The Words of Radiance soon. And I, I've picked out... Like, I've already filmed my TBR, and I have my Wheel of TBR back in action, and I'm just wondering when is going to be the right time for me to settle into the Words of Radiance. Um, it was really hard not to just, like, pick that up immediately after finishing this, um, immediately after finishing The Way of Kings, but honestly, I needed a little bit of time to let everything settle in. And I still don't think I picked up on a lot of stuff. Obviously, there's so much. I don't have any particular grand plans of, of finishing... Words of Radiance and Oathbringer before Rhythms of War come out. That's just really ambitious to me. And, and there's a lot of stuff that I want to read yet this year. Man, I really want to get back to this. I guess that's, that's all I've got for now. Maybe more to come. This video is going to be long enough. It's going to be rambly enough. But here we are. I have finally read The Way of Kings. There's just so many questions that I have that make me so pumped for the next book. Um, again, you're only going to see spoiler-filled videos for the for Words of Radiance and Oathbringer. Maybe I'll do a review of Rhythms of War, but honestly, again, there's just like so many better reviews out there with Cosmere-related content that I might as well just like leave them up to it because... There, it's like I bow down to the master, give credit where credit is due. But let me know what you thought of this. What did you think of The Way of Kings? Now that I finally read it, we can talk in the comment section below. You can also find me on social media if you want. Instagram and Twitter, it's at what Cass read, the same as this channel, so it's super easy to find. My Goodreads account is always going to be linked and listed down below for you. And of course, you know how these videos end. I'll talk to you later. Bye.